Today we're going to talk about PowerFilm's new custom solar panel design tool. Um, this is just a tool that we developed to help us and to help you better understand the ways that we can make a custom panel. There's a lot of different parameters and a lot of different ways and options that we can modify a panel and sometimes it's a little difficult for us to explain and this tool just kind of makes it easy to go in and play around with the parameters and, and kind of see for yourself what what is easy for us to manufacture. This isn't meant to be an exhaustive kind of way list of ways that we can do things but it's really meant to kind of communicate what's easiest for us to do. And this is based on our electronic component solar panels family of products. It's our amorphous silicon line. And a lot of these standard panels are the basis of, of a lot of our custom designs. To start out, I'd like to kind of go over the basic parts of a solar panel so then you can understand what we're actually changing. So on the left and right side of the panel here, we have what we call bus bars. That provides the positive and negative electrodes for you to, to connect and, and extract power out of the panel. Each cell is going to add panel voltage and current to the panel. And each cell has what we call fingers going across them. And th that would be these silver lines. Those actually carry the current between cells and throughout the panel. And those are needed just to ensure that the panel is operating at the highest performance. So a lot of times when we work on a custom solution, we need to define several different parameters which drive, drive the custom solution. Some of those include panel voltage, so what voltage does your system operate at? Panel current, how much current do you need to, to power your system? And then there's a lot of times there's a dimensional requirement, so how big of a panel can, can you fit onto your surface. And given those kind of three requirements kind of gives you a really good idea of what a custom solar panel will look like. So starting with panel voltage, panel voltage is going to be dependent on how many cells that you have in a panel. So this, this panel has three cells putting 3.6 volts. So if we go down to one cell, we can see that each cell adds 1.2 volts to the panel. And if we increase the, the number of cells, we add 1.2 volts for each cell. And it's easy for us to make up to eight cells, for example. Another parameter that will affect panel voltage is whether the material itself is tandem junction or single junction. That's just two different ways that we can make the material itself. A tandem junction has two solar junctions embedded inside of the material. Single junction only has one. So it tandem junction will have double the voltage of what a single junction panel would have. So if I switch to a single junction panel, my voltage drops from 3.6 to 1.8 volts. For a couple reasons, we, we usually tend to recommend tandem junction panels if possible, but in general, they either one is a viable solution. They both provide similar performance. So once we have panel voltage, then we can kind of adjust the size of the, the cells themselves to kind of tailor the amount of current that the panel produces. So if we think about power, power is voltage times current, so we can, to get to a target power, so right now we're producing 180 milliwatts. So if we look at cell length, we have three standard cell lengths. One is 10 millimeters wide, 20 millimeters wide, and 40 millimeters wide. So you can see that the, the current is increasing when I'm increasing the length of the, the, the cells while the voltage is staying the same. Next we can adjust the width of the cells so we can make the panel skinnier which will decrease the current or wider which will increase the current. We deposit on a, a 13 inch web so the, the widest we can make a cell is about 292 millimeters wide. And the skinniest we can make a cell is nearly down to 10 millimeters. So the next thing when you're thinking about a custom solution is what type of environment it is going to be placed in. For these types of, of panels we have uh, two formulas. One is an outdoor formula and one is an indoor formula. They're pretty similar but we tweak our material a little bit so that it's optimized to perform in either environment. So outdoors the panel is going to have a lot more power available to collect. So we rate that under direct sunlight all the way down to 25 percent sunlight. Um, an indoor environment there's a lot less power available magnitudes of order. Um, so if you look at the power specs we, we spec at 200 lux and 1000 lux um, 
based on a, a cool white LED spectrum. You can see the current is, is just much less than the outdoor version. One advantage of the indoor is that since we're working with su such low power levels and such low current levels, we actually don't need the silver fingers anymore and we can remove those from the panel. So next we have other additional options I um, mean, this is not also not an exhaustive list. This is just kind of examples of, of a lot of the ways that we customize our panels for a lot of our customers. So if you have an outdoor panel, um, you may need UV protection, protect that panel from long-term outdoor exposure to direct sunlight. You may need a panel that can hold up to the elements and has a, a weather sealing edge around it. I like to group these together because a lot of times Customers will install our standard panels inside of a UV protected weatherproof enclosure that is optically clear. And a lot of times that can be a very viable, feasible solution as well. We have the option of front and backside contacts. So standard panels come with laminate encapsulating the entire panel. We offer options that will expose certain parts of, of the bus bar just to make it easier for a customer to make electrical contact with the bus bars. Whether that's soldering wires or surface mount to a PC board or something else. We also have a couple cosmetic options that changes the appearance of the panel. Our standard bus bars are, are silver colored, but we also have a black tape option that will make the panel that will make the bus bars black. So if you want a kind of a sleeker design and you're working with an indoor panel with that doesn't have fingers, using black bus bars can really make the, the panel look a little bit more sleek. We also provide adhesive backings for a lot of our customers. That can be a permanent peel and stick, uh, can be semi-permanent, temporary. Most of our panels are die cut out of the web. So we can add bus bar tabs to the end of the panel to make it easier for you to make that connection to the bus bar. Finally, we can adjust the size of the bus bar. I mean, for these panels, the bus bar is not gonna affect performance. It's mainly just a mechanical preference. So sometimes a skinny, skinnier bus bar is harder to connect with, especially if you're using some sort of mechanical connection. So a, a wider bus bar can make it easier for you to do um, a fold over connection or uh, just gives you more space to play with. I hope this gives you a better idea of, of the different ways that we can customize a panel to kind of fit the needs of an application. We can make it different voltages, power levels. We have lots of options as far as of how durable it can be and what the panel will look like. So definitely if you have questions, feel free to contact us and we can uh, help you better understand any one of these parameters.